Hello everyone, this is Kelly Beard of KarmicTools.com and this is your weekly forecast for June 30th to July 6th of 2024. So our quote for the week says, Cultivate an unbreakable line of communication with your own intuition. And I love this little sliver of the moon for our new moon week and the watery depths of cancer. We all get to reconnect with our inner empath, intuitive, the psychic, that part of you that thinks with your feelings. And we open the week Monday, July 1st with Neptune retrograding at 29 Pisces. And it'll be retrograde until December 7th. This 29 is special because Neptune has a 165 year cycle and it is at the last degree of the last sign before it renews itself in Aries and will eventually meet up with Saturn in Aries so that the dream and the reality can be birthed anew. So something to chew on in terms of what you're incubating, because this is the way we describe Neptune, where the moon represents the individual womb energy. Neptune represents the collective womb experience on a much higher level. So as a whole, we are all returning to the womb at this time essentially preparing for yet another rebirth. It's not going to be as tangible as some would prefer. From Neptune comes all things formless, but very, very real. Subconscious, dreams, magic, music, art, etc. While the womb was the source of nourishment and protection at one time, we annually renew that connection through the Neptune retrograde. It's time to check in on the relationship between your spirit and your human form. Every year, we are supported to renew that which supports us on a spiritual level. It is where you need to return periodically for strength, nourishment, and wisdom. This is kind of deep because we just finished the Venus Circle, so that replay and tools are available. And it's in Cancer. And we talked about returning to home, returning to source, which always somehow includes returning to the waters. So I remind you here, too, how many amazing rituals and ceremonies and things that we're cooking up with Ye Ye Tish to honor, to heal, to cleanse the waters, to bless the waters around the world. This is going to become an annual thing that we do as a community that we hope will go global. And this is the time to redream it when Neptune goes backwards. This is also a time for that. Anyway, we're returning to some kind of source for strength, nourishment, and wisdom. And the more regularly you are able to do this, the stronger the connection to your spirit and true purpose. When Neptune retrogrades, it may be less shocking than Uranus or Pluto, but no less effective. Its primary goal during a retrograde is to gently dissolve personal boundaries and remind you that you are an eternal spirit in a temporary form. You start to realize that you are connected to the whole. Not a bad idea, but to some it can be unsettling if they are rigidly holding on to the boundaries of a false sense of security. Where you might pursue your dreams and visions when it is direct, when it's retrograding, be creative. Read, write, sing, dance in private for your own pure joy and delight as well as for cleansing and releasing purposes, because all of that also moves energy, y'all, through your body, out of your mental body, out of your physical body, out of your emotional body, when you move it like that. In addition to dreaming for the community, dream for your deepest soul self as well. Connect to that original intent, that original person that you were born to be, before you were imprinted by your family, culture, or environment. Original intent. See if we can get back to that. When you can, over the next five months, take some time to get back to your center and renew your connection to great spirit. There's a little footnote here and a link to a great article. Neptune is a collective planet, which means that all those born in a 14-year period have Neptune in the same sign and will share this spiritual connection. Jamie of Pandora Astrology calls it the shared dream of each generation and has a fantastic short article on the generations that I will link here in the blog. Now we move to Tuesday the 2nd, when Mercury will trine Neptune, which is retrograde, so this is deep. This energy ignites your creative fire, faith, and revelations. You may notice yourself drifting aimlessly without conscious direction. 
Yet this fusion offers a unique opportunity to tap into alternate realms for intelligence, vision, inspiration, and insight. Embrace this period as a chance to freely explore ideas and information, allowing them to flow unrestricted, leading you to unforeseen possibilities. Rather than engaging in pragmatic analysis, it is time to delve into the infinite potential of now and delve deeper into your own consciousness. You might experience heightened sensitivity, becoming receptive to information or awareness not usually this easily accessible. It is essential to maintain strong, healthy boundaries while opening up to this mystical vibe. If you find yourself amidst others, strive to preserve the magical and creative ambiance that best complements this energy's essence. Deep breath. This is a big day energetically, Tuesday the 2nd. Now Venus trines Saturn. During this activation, an effortless and harmonious energy prevails, offering you fertile ground to consciously engage with, which can lead to remarkable and palpable outcomes. It is an opportune moment to crystallize your vision and clarify your definitions within the realm of relationships, for at this time, your values and priorities are distinctly illuminated. This is Venus. And Saturn, we're getting serious somewhere in here. It's a little reality check, but trine means ease and grace. It doesn't mean any kind of punishment or anything like that. This is probably rewards for some work already put in. Here, drawing from your past positive choices and endeavors, you can anticipate positive benefits and well-deserved rewards heading your way. If you have sidestepped your responsibilities in any relationships, be they public or private, this energy provides a chance to realign, offering a smoother course unlike the challenges typically associated with Saturn's influence. Okay, like I said, that trying gives us ease and grace to get back on track if we need to with our values and priorities, if we have gotten off track. Practicality regarding your limitations and a realistic evaluation of others' contributions are keys to leveraging this energy. It supports discussions aimed at progress, growth, or elevating to a higher collective level, which can also foster teamwork and a sense of kinship. Engaging in strategic planning for the future, delineating a vision that safeguards and nurtures all involved, and honoring the vital essence of life pulsating through these interactions, find profound support through this harmonious alignment. Venus embodies the energies of love, money, and magnetics, and Saturn advocates for an objective and somewhat conservative approach to both your relationships and finances. Given this fusion of potent energies, I recommend outlining realistic relationship or financial goals spanning the next three, six, nine, or 12 months as a guiding compass for this time. Okay, deep breath. We're in July. We're sort of right past sol summer solstice, the halfway point in the year. So this is a great time to think about these things and engage, use this energy for what it's good for. Now, here we go. Mercury's entering Leo and then Virgo and then retrograding back through both. So here's the beginning. It's in Leo from July 2nd to July 25th. And as Mercury moves into Leo, we get to be more creative and make new connections to how we'd like to express ourselves. This year, more than ever, it is time to think with your feelings. Don't let the monkey mind lead. Naturally, the external will begin to reflect the upgrade to your internal consciousness as you integrate all that you've learned in the last year or so. In Leo, we are deeply supported to activate our most unique genius and brilliant creativity, or at least infuse our ideas with some new beauty, essence, love, light, and truth. Get creative and be open, optimistic, playful, and detached from outcome as you play with the new ways of communicating with others and expressing yourself in a more authentic way. This is most relevant for those with strong Leo, Aquarius, and Taurus, Scorpio energies in your chart. Also note that Mercury is going to linger in Leo, Virgo this year, facilitating a deeper shift in those departments of life, the houses in your chart where Leo and Virgo are. This means that we are also getting some extra time, energy, and space to rethink our creative projects. They may not reflect your authentic self as both you and how you express, are both evolving or have evolved in big ways recently. Rethinking if, when, and how you have fun and integrate joy and playfulness into your life. These days, you have to really consciously make space for all that because modern culture keeps us all in survival mode, spinning in this monetary system. 
Use this extended stay to rethink the issues of your Leo house and reflect on how you could express a whole new aspect of self going forward in the fall of this year. So dates to remember, Mercury is going to enter Leo July 2nd, enter Virgo July 25th, retrograde at four degrees Virgo on August 4th. Then it's still going to be retrograde when it re-enters Leo on August 14th, go direct at 21 Leo on August 28th, then it'll be direct, moving back into Virgo on 9-9, and finally makes it into Libra on 9-26, on September 26th, so right after fall equinox. So here we are pretty much between summer solstice and fall equinox this whole quarter. Mercury is doing his thing, lingering in this zone, slowing down to rethink some things. So I'm throwing in the Mercury replay here. This is part two, which covers this one, which is Leo Virgo in July, August, September. And we covered the end of the year when it's going to retrograde through Sagittarius over the cusp of 24-25. So both of those are covered in this replay, and I highly recommend them. And since we're still on Tuesday, July 2nd, this is the first Astro 101 class. We're doing eight weeks on Tuesday evenings, 7 to 9 p.m. on the East Coast, which is 4 to 6 on the West Coast. If you've been on the fence, we only have one or two slots available, so we'd love to have you. You can click on this link in the blog for details and registration, and then give me some time to get your custom goodies in the mail and to you. But we're about to launch this Tuesday, and it's going to be wonderful. Now, on Wednesday the 3rd, Mercury opposes Pluto. Here we are at 1 degree Leo and 1 degree Aquarius. Mercury, your individual thinking and processing, communication and self-expression, ideas, thoughts, and concepts. Opposite Pluto, which is purification and transformation. So we need to be mindful that, again, we're getting some upgrades here. As it goes in, this is the first thing it does. And if I'm not mistaken, what's interesting about this whole zone is when it comes out, it's going to oppose Saturn. So while it's in Leo, it's recalibrating with Pluto, this utter rebirth and transformation in the Leo Aquarius departments. But when it moves to Virgo Pisces, with Saturn, we get to reset the reality and our consciousness and what we believe to be true or possible. And how our thinking either helps or hinders us in our processes, right? We don't want to do that. The shadow of Pisces and Virgo is a lot of fears and phobias and things. So we don't want to go through the shadow. We want to call in that sense of right timing for you, the individual, and know that after we go through this recalibration, if we do the transformation on the front end, do the review as Mercury does to us three times a year, giving us a chance to do a little mental body upgrade. Then when we come out of it, we get to reset the reality in a delicious way, I think. So let's just see what happens. We're going in. This one on the front end is an opposition that highlights the clash between your conscious thoughts and your subconscious motivations, encouraging a profound exploration of the potency wielded by your mind and its ideas. Take a moment to ponder, how have your thoughts influenced the decisions that you have made in the past six months? Are you still governed by outdated ideas or negative thought patterns? Every opposition serves as an opportunity for genuine integration, emphasizing the ongoing necessity to harmonize our conscious and subconscious thinking, which impacts our daily decisions. Consider seeking counsel from a trusted advisor or wise confidant to gain clarity on what aspects of self-sabotage your conscious mind is becoming aware of. This activation supports a thorough excavation, pulling out issues by their roots. That's the beauty of Pluto, honey. We go to the root on this one. Often, we tend to address the symptoms rather than the underlying causes of our inner unrest, yet Pluto will not allow such superficial treatment. It is an invitation to delve deeper, to acknowledge the inherent power residing within your heart and mind, and to discover a balanced center that nurtures inner tranquility while promoting outer effectiveness. Okay, that's what we're going for. Inner tranquility, peace, balance, groundedness within, so that we are effective in our movements and choices and interactions with others. Deep breath. That's Wednesday the 3rd when we will have Bear Medicine. The Soul Sisters Circle gets together every month behind an animal medicine. 
And July is bare when we recalibrate the boundaries and we recalibrate input and output, which is also what Mercury retrograde is going to be good for. So we're doubling down there on some healing. It's a conference call, not a Zoom. And we get together at 8 p.m. Eastern, which is 5 p.m. Pacific. And it is a subscription. It's $25 a month for all the tools and the replay. But we'd love you to join us live. Now we jump to Friday the 5th when Mars will sextile Saturn. This is another powerful one to work with. I mean, this whole week is just packed, y'all. This energy offers a significant boost to your drive to establish stability on your own terms, okay? We're defining our own terms with this Saturn reboot. You will find yourself more motivated to put in the necessary work and dedication, starting with meticulous planning, followed by methodical execution. It is about both planning and action, and this combination can yield tangible results over time. The outcomes of your efforts or investments will directly reflect the energy that you have dedicated to stabilizing your life recently. Rather than suppressing this energy, it is crucial to direct it consciously. Excessive restriction and limitations may lead to explosive outcomes down the line, whereas patience and channeling this energy into cultivating a solid foundation will help you attain results and manifest your desires. Okay, deep breath. So if Mars doesn't have an outlet, it just becomes, you know, energy all bottled up with Saturn. So we want to channel it into a project, channel it into your body, channel it into something important to you that is helping stabilize your life and make you stronger for whatever it is you're calling in because the same day is the Cancer New Moon when we call in the new in this department. This is a powerful opportunity to start anew in the Cancer area of life, which is the house in your chart, or maybe two. We are getting a dose of new beginning energy that is so needed and necessary right now, considering the large-scale endings that we are also dealing with. This month gets personal thanks to the watery, changeable Cancer vibe and the new moon. They are helping us all seed a new consciousness, a new story, and new ways of interacting with others. It is time to initiate something that you are willing to be responsible for nurturing to its full development and releasing to the universe. Something born from you. Cancer is the best time to practice deep self-care so that you are a more reliable vehicle for bringing your creations to life. Where is the fertile ground in your life, your environment, or the world at this time? What personal tending is up for you at this time? What basic fundamentals do you need in order to feel loved, supported, well-fed, and cared for? Cancer Capricorn both activate our lessons around the basics in life, emotional and physical security, food and shelter. It's about feeling what needs to be done and then doing it. So don't give in to emotional overwhelm. Instead, as you develop a whole new way of containing, nurturing, and protecting your life force energy, which is fuel what you eat or feed others, you are subsequently honoring your own individual feelings and personal nature. Remember, cancer is how we feel on the inside about the Capricorn reality that we're living on the outside. So if there is a discrepancy, the new moon is time to go within and seed a new vision. Deep breath. I would like to remind you to take some time during July, August this year to assess and integrate your own personal growth, development, and direction for the year. Use this time to release ideas, people, or situations which drain your life force energy, dim your light, or block your flow. In Cancer, you are reminded to check in with your own natural rhythm and assess where you may have gotten off that rhythm and must reset yourself this summer so that you can handle the upcoming fall harvest. How can you renew your dedication to a routine that nourishes, inspires, and energizes you? How can you put your ideas and skills to good use in the world? Where are your gifts and talents needed, valued, and honored? What nourishes your body, awakens your mind, and feeds your soul? Check in with your soul self this summer. Much of these very fundamental, basic things in our lives have changed, and so have we. To add to that, we are in the process of what I call the lunar flip. For the last 18 months, the full moon preceded the new moon, creating a rhythm of having to complete, clear, and release before seeding anything new. Now that rhythm is shifting to the new moon preceding the full moon, which creates a rhythm of having to plant your seeds and walk by faith to the full moon, which usually shines a light on anything possibly blocking those new moon seeds from taking root and growing healthy and strong. This means that we may have to do some tweaks and adjustments before really launching anything new for the next 18 months. 
We are going through two Capricorn full moon releases to facilitate the initiation at 14 degrees Cancer in your chart. In other words, we have to release things from two different areas of life, most likely for most people, so that something important can initiate properly. This is especially potent and transformative for anyone with strong Aries Libra or Cancer Capricorn in their charts. And this is a very big deal for Ye Ye Tish and the New Moon Money Pouring Ritual that I do with her every month. You can join her Patreon for $5 or more and get the New Moon. But I always recommend that you do the 25 or more because that gets you the Full Moon and the New Moon live rituals with both of us. So join her Patreon to get up with these live rituals. And this one I'm saying is so important for Ye Ye because we're launching a very big dream. And we will be calling in the prayers and energetic support of the community around this, which is so perfect. She's a cancer rising and she's trying to feed the world. God knows. So this is a very big vision that she's been dreaming about a long time that I think is ready to manifest. And we invite you to join us to call in those good energies to make that happen. Meantime, there are a bunch of replays at the bottom of the blog that are super relevant and timely right now. Saturn and Pisces replay, we'll catch you up on that because by 2025, it's going to start moving back and forth into Aries and that's going to usher in a completely different vibration. The Solstice replay has the energetic support between June 20th and August 6th of this year, so that's good to refer to. The lunar update is critical because of this lunar flip and everything we're going through this May, June, July lunations. So that ended up being really powerful and popular. Jupiter and Gemini is a big deal because it's only there once every 12 years and it just got started. So this is a good time to check in and see what that means for you and how it's going to expand and initiate you in your Gemini department, which will ask your Sag department to integrate something so that your Virgo and Pisces departments can grow and change and develop in some way. And you know what's coming down the pike with Jupiter and Gemini and Saturn and Pisces means the truth and purpose is about to square off. You know, air and water can cause a storm. But what we're thinking about here would be mental and emotional, what you believe to be true or possible up against the reality and what's really happening in real time on the ground. And so just know there's a growth moment this year coming soon. I can't remember the exact date right now, but I did see it and I've already written it down for the future. So the cancer articles are here, the power circle subscription. So the free call I do every month is for everybody, community, you're welcome to it. I created this power circle subscription that's only $9.99 a month or $99 for the year, which gets you two months for free because I had a lot of people asking how they could donate for that regular offering that I do something, you know, just a little something, something. And in exchange, you get these reports, you get the lunar tools, you get 10% off all my other big ticket items, lots of bonus goodies. So that's really for my dedicated students who are tracking their activations and the energies and the elements and really seeing how things unfold for them. Also, if you're trying to figure out what would be good for you and get to know a Kelly reading, the Astro Tarot reading is kind of my signature two for one where we go in on your cycles and we do a here and now question with the tarot. And that is a great baseline before we move into other things. And at the bottom of the blog is the Soul Sister Circle video invitation, which is great for new folks or people who want to share me with others. There are Karmic Tools affiliate links for that too, where you get a little kickback. So look into that. Those links are here as well. But that video covers a little bit of my story, the core values that run through all my circles, and is just a nice introduction to the kind of work I do. So check that out if you haven't already. And that is it for our Power Packed Week. This is a lot of water and earth and fire energy. So we might have to bring the air in consciously, which means being conscious and moving through awake and alert and making good choices and decisions, which at this time we should just be feeling into the possibilities, maybe not necessarily making those choices just yet. But you know your chart and the energies that support you. And if you don't, reach out directly and join us at some of these live events when and where you can. And I hope you have a fantastic week. This is Kelly Beard of Karmic Tools signing off.